Do you really need to buy the Stumac fret erasers? I've been doing a lot of fret work lately, and to be honest, they're probably one of my favorite tools that I've purchased over the last couple years. I have all the different fretting tools available, and I exclusively use this for many years. It got the crown nice, so after you level the frets, you got to recrown. And this was my go-to tool for a while. And then I bought the Stu Mac Diamond Recrowner, and this thing works like a champ. Really great to have. Glad it was a diamond as I was doing these frets. The fret erasers are really nice because they allow you to work on the fretboard without really damaging it too much. It's not going to zing or ding. When you're using a hard tool on a fretboard and it slips, which it will slip at some point, you'll nick the fretboard. And one of the cool things about the Kevin Bond guitar is actually putting the finish on first, getting it all set, and then doing the fretwork because of how I wanted the coloring to look. I would never get the coloring correct with the frets on. So after I had re-leveled the frets and got everything done, the fret erasers are really cool because they're malleable, they move a little bit, and they're really easy to use. So historically to recrown or polish up a fret, you take a piece of sandpaper, roll it up, and go back and forth, and that would really hurt my hands. You'd be pushing really hard. If you're doing a lot of fret work and you're going back and forth, it's gonna hurt your hands after a while. The racers are nice, good size, you can actually go back and forth, and it's not going to hurt your hand. So Stumac sells a ton of different grits, and I purchased the cheap pack off eBay a while ago, and then I actually spilled for the fret erasers because I really liked using them so much. So on the Kevin Bond guitar, there's one little nick here that I want to clean up, and I'm going to take the 220 grit. And I rub back and forth here. And it takes that scratch out. What's really cool about this is it actually grabs the whole fret. And the eraser sort of wraps around it. These aren't great for recrowning, but for polishing. There's nothing better. So you can see as I'm doing this, I'm getting rid of the scratch. So that's 220. Then we'll come back with 800. And I love as you're using this, it grabs the whole fret. If you turn this, you can use the edge. Or if you want to get a little bit more surface area, you turn it. So that's 800, 1200. And this is what I really like doing, is now I can get all those scratches out. We'll move to 2000. What's nice, if I scratch the fretboard, I'm not going to actually scratch it. It's great. It's, these are really great for finished fretboards if you're doing a refret. 2,000, 4,000. 8,000. That scratch is all gone. and I can quickly clean up the fret. It looks nice and buffed at 8,000. If I want, I can take some steel wool with it real quick. But the fret erasers, the way they're set up, the way you can use these multiple sides and just keep turning it. This is the other set that I bought and it's sort of where the crown is. And I can just get it nicely it's really not good for creating a flat crown. It's really good for polishing versus the sandpaper. So after I level the frets, I'll still go back 
and recrown. But then I've got the 220 and up here to actually polish it and be done. Fretting goes a lot quicker with the fret erasers than I've done historically. I tried a gazillion different websites to find them cheaper or I could not find them in this many grits other than Stumac. So Stumac has them, buy them, they are totally worth it. Makes my life so much easier as I'm doing a whole ton of fretting jobs and cleaning guitars up. So Stumac fret erasers, if you're just getting in, I don't think you really need them right off the bat. You can go with the sandpaper to recrown frets. But if you're doing a ton of guitar work and a ton of fret work, these do make life a ton easier. So thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next vid.